so before starting i request you to kindly go uh, to youtube channel that is the inno mind where you can find all the related uh, subjects like uh, python and uh, sql all those things are already covered so if you want to study or revise all those things you can go and just check the playlist and today's lecture is basically uh, about the pattern how to make the pattern programs be it in java or in any language so today we'll be covering in python language and the topic will be how to write what is the methodology to write the uh, pattern programs so before starting the concept let's understand one the very important concept that is matrix so what is a matrix so it's basically 2d or 3d structure or you can say when your data is arranged in the form of rows and columns you can call it as a matrix in a layman term when you see in excel sheet you can see there are different rows and different columns and if you take those rows and columns into a form of table you can say that is a matrix so here you see a, a typical example where we have certain elements and the vertical when i say these vertical like 1 2 3 dot 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 up to n so these are columns and this horizontal things that is in green color is rows so anything in a matrix can be defined by its rows and column combination so each item that is a11 a12 or anything these are called as the elements of the matrix so now to understand how to make a pattern every pattern you should consider it as a form of matrix okay suppose this is a pattern so this is a form of matrix where we at some places we have element as space and at some places we have elements as stars so until unless you realize in that pattern in that methodology you will not be able to solve any pattern program why i say that i'll come to that uh, in a minute so let me share another screen here just a second so suppose this is a matrix and we have elements as 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 and when i talk of rows we have two rows here row number 1 and row number 2 and when i talk of columns i have three columns column number 1 2 and 3 and the address of each element when i say address i basically means the location of each element is very important and that is decided by row and column combinations so element number 1 is basically row comma column if i want to find the location of 1 it is basically given by the row and column combination so row is 1 and column is 1 similarly for this element it is row is 1 and column is 2 similarly for this element that is sixth row is 2 and column is 3 you have to understand only this much and once you have understood this concept you are ready to start your programming of making any pattern program now you see here element a11 is basically referred as row 1 and column 1 and at the last here this one this element is basically referred as amn m is mth row and nth column okay so this is the position one okay this was one important concept that you should understand like whenever you are going to look for any element you have to basically focus on the location of the matrix so if i have a star program here 
so what is happening here is this is star and this is space okay or blank spaces so if i have to print a triangle like this i have to consider it in the form of rows and column okay so it says there are three rows three columns and how is it changing let's understand that we have star mark here when it is row is equals to 1 we have one star when row is equals to 2 we have two stars when row is equals to 3 we have three stars so this is second logic that you should build up how many stars are there in a given row or you can also make that logic similarly for the column for column 1 we have one star for column 2 we have two star for column 3 we have three star so this is second logic you can understand how it is being done or you can do it by the combination of row and column when row is equals to 1 and column is equals to 1 we have one star okay, we'll be focusing on this when row is equals to 2 and column what is the last position of a star column is equals to 2 so that is when row is equals to 2 stars are at column 1 and column 2 when row is equals to 3 stars are at column 1 column 2 and column 3 so let's focus on the third one when row was 1 column maximum column with the star was 1 when row is equals to 2 maximum column with the star is equals to 1 and 2 row is equals to 3 column is equals to 1 2 and 3 so why I am writing this is to make you understand that the maximum limit of column is basically decided by the row the maximum limit of the column is being decided by the row value so that is if my row is n the number of stars are going to be printed as 1 2 3 dot 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 up to n that is the basic logic okay now you see this is row 1 this is row 2 this is row 3 I know how to print a number okay this is being repeated suppose if I want to print a number from 1 to n I will simply write a program here that is for loop for i in range suppose if I have to print from 1 to 10 1 to 11 because last number is not counted in range function so now if I do this and if I print the value of i I am going to get something like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay these are the elements but you see for making a matrix we need two different things that is rows and column but here we are getting just one single column and row okay to make another row or another column we need to make two for loops okay before doing that let's understand the mechanism of for loop first so what is happening here the range function is basically going from 1 to 11 11 is not getting included now I will take the value of first value here that is 1 then it is getting printed then again it is going back and I is taking the another value that is 2 and it is getting printed here so this is how we are getting 1 to 10 numbers now suppose if I want to print 0 to 4 okay so including 4 so that is why I have taken fifth also as an element okay if I want to print 0 to 4 I will include fifth number because that is excluded okay 
so this is 0 to 4 okay let me take a block here and show you how this the for loop one so range is basically when we are writing range function 0 comma 4 what it is going to do is it is going to take the values as 0 1 2 3 okay because last number is not included now when the range has already calculated the numbers what are all the numbers we have so it will make a list of that so okay so this is going to give us a list of the numbers so next thing is going to happen is for i in this list and this list is basically having my number that is 0 1 2 and 3 so what is happening happening here is i is getting iterated iterated means it is moving one by one okay so first i goes to this list i goes to this list and takes the first value so what is my first value here so first value is 0 then i goes back again and takes the second number and that is 1 and that goes on up to 3 okay one very important thing that you should understand is in the case of list whenever you write an element 0 okay let's write it a b c and d what is happening here is you should understand in this list the position when i say position or index index of any element okay index of any element okay let's suppose it's a index or the position or address you can also call it as address in the layman term so what is the address of a so address of a is basically go to the list so these are the element a b and c and d these are the elements that are stored in a house or these are the people a b c d are the people living in a house called as list l i s t so go to this house and then go to the room number zero because the counting starts from zero not from one in normal uh, if you see normally in normal counting system the counting starts from one okay because zero does not have any value but it does not happen in the case of uh, any coding languages or python or java so the counting always starts from zero okay so what i'm doing is i'm going to room number zero i'm knocking it and whosoever comes out is a similarly if i go to list house is list and if i knock room number three so room number three is basically zero one two and three so whosoever comes out is d that's it uh, okay that's the basic idea how the work uh, like address or the indexing work in case of list now let's see how this thing work if i want to print four stars okay before that let me print one thing print star what is going to happen here is it is going to just print one single x or star but if i have to repeat it what I can do is I'll write print multiple x if I have to print I'll print this way and again if I want to write another if I want to do this it will print 3 okay what is happening if I want to print like 100 number of stars so i cannot keep writing print 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 so that is why we have for loop for loop is basically used when we need some kind of a repetition when we need anything to be printed more than one times so in that case we use for loop so suppose we have to print four stars i'll write a for loop for loop basically tells that repeat anything four times and in python you must remember that indentation happens like 
inside the for block if i want to write anything inside the for block i have to indent it by some spaces for more detail you can check the lectures that are already there in the python for data science so what we have done is i have already covered all the basics to advanced level up to okay that's more than sufficient here so in this you can check how these things are done indentation and all those things okay so if i want to print star i'll go inside the for loop and i'll print star and for loop is basically decided by how many times i am going to print it it is decided by range function so if i do this run it you see i am getting star marks printed in each different line what if i want to print it in the same line okay what is happening here is every star marks is getting printed in different line what if if i want to print in the same line for that we use this methodology print i you see earlier what we used print star okay i can give uh, i can even give here star also wait so that's it remains same so print star now we'll write a command called as end is equals to sing in single quotes no spaces here just put like this so what it is going to do is it is going to change uh, so, so this is changing line here right so it is not allowing it to change the line it is adding all the outputs in one single line okay so if anybody uh, like have done java they might have uh, they might be familiar with the uh, two different syntax of printing that is system dot out print and system dot out print ln so ln is basically to change line and this is to print in the same line similarly in python we have this so if you want all the outputs to be printed in the same line you have to write like this now in the end part if you insert a bracket here you see the output changes with a space here okay now let's see another example of printing comma separated strings so these are the characters like basically a b and c now if i run it and i print it you see a b c all printed in one single line so this was not the case of for loop in for loop when you tried to print it got printed into different line let's see what happens if we add end in this will it change anything i don't think it is going to change why because already everything is in single line so it is not going to change here now let's see this example i have made a list and the elements are 1 2 3 4 and 5 okay for i in my list i in my list so i is an iterator or you can say an agent or a delivery person who is going to who is go, who will be going to my list this house and fetching or taking each element one by one and then if you want to print it or do any operation on that you can do it so what i am doing is for i in my list okay i am sending my delivery person in the list my list and in that take each element and print it so it is going to print 1 2 3 4 5 okay now suppose i have done it like this print i and is equals to in single quotes so that is basically going to give the output in one single line you see 1 2 3 4 okay let's not comment this so that you will understand how things are there so okay so <laughs> let's remove this yeah print i is equals to i and is equals to this semicolon so what is happening here every output is getting printed into one single line now let's see if we add a space into this so 1 2 3 4 5 is now getting printed with a space separated okay now if i print print star my list what is happening here is this is basically this method is basically called as unpacking with iterable uh, content so what does that mean is basically 
so this is printing all the list here one two three four five all the elements are getting iterated okay in one single when i is equals to one it is printing all the list here again when i is equals to two it is printing all the elements again when i is equals to three it is printing all the elements again so this is horizontally uh, iteration of the same uh, of a list okay let's not get confused it's just an example how things are happen in this uh, for loop okay so let's understand how a nested for loop is done so what i have done is for i in range 0 to 3 for j in range 3 to 6 okay you see i have put a colon and this is indented indented means this second for is basically inside the first for loop so what is happening is when i is equals to 0 j is going to change from 3 6 3 4 5 6 okay okay let's, let's keep it 0 and three. let's keep it same let me run it then i'll explain it okay so first a value of i is equals to okay one more thing. let me print here okay so for i in range 0 to 3 so range 0 to 3 is basically gonna, gonna give us numbers that is 0 1 and 2 okay then coming inside of that print value of i and we are printing the value of i so the value of i is 0 then the next statement is for j in range 0 to 3 so again j is gonna have the values 0 1 and 2 and then we are printing the value of j so when the value of i is equals to 0 we are going inside the j loop and printing the values of j and you see until and unless this last element is printed we are not going back to i okay so j is printing all the three values here and then once it is finished it is going back to the first for loop now the value of i becomes 1 and then it prints the value of i you see now we have value of i as 1 so then again it is j is equals to 0 1 2 and then again value of i is equals to 2 and then again 0 1 2 why are we doing this in a pattern program you will understand in a minute because every time we are going to make a pattern we have to change the rows and we have to change the columns so this particular program is basically showing you when the loop is changing how it is affecting okay how it is affecting the rows and columns where your current location is now see this example in this what we are doing is in this we did not use any uh, okay let if i remove this okay let it be uh, i'm what i'm doing here is i'm printing again i is equals to 0 to 3 j is equals to 3 to 6 j and then end let's run it let's make it 0 and 3 so what hap what's happening is 0 1 2 0 1 2 0 1 2 0 1 2 is basically printed from j okay and this end command is not allowing the j loop to change the line so 0 1 2 this is printed again when i value changes to 1 again we are printing 0 1 2 then again i value changes from 1 to 2 that is the last value again we are printing the j as 0 1 2 what if, if if i want to change line after every j loop is completed that is when this is completed i want to change the line to change the line we use escape sequence escape sequence is this to change the line we write in single quote slash n so what is happening here is 
once the j is printed printed that is 0 1 and 2 in the same line the for loop for the j is completed now now it is going outside of this loop outside of this loop is the next line is print n so what it is going to do is it is going to change the line so what will happen here is it will print 0 1 and 2 okay the j loop has completed now now it is going to print slash n so that is it is going to change line here you see 0 1 2 0 1 2 and 0 1 2 okay. the number of times the line is getting changed is changed is three times and that is being decided by i because this particular thing is written inside i block you see if you understand the indentation here so this print is basically in the same level as the second for and these two things are inside i block so this is printing 0 1 2 0 1 2 and 0 1 2 now let's change this simple program into a square program of a square pattern of star okay for i in range 0 to 5 for j in range 0 to 5 that is 4 cross 4 square pattern we are going to print now instead of i or j we are going to print star you see 1 2 3 4 5 so when j i is equals to 1 0 sorry when i is equals to 0 okay one more thing it's not necessary that you start from 0 here until see in the range here this 0 to 5 we are not using these values we instead we are using these as counters when i say counters means it is just using the number of times a loop is to be run when you want to use these values that is i and j there are certain uh, programs where you'll be using these things i'll show it in the last so we'll see that we'll be changing these values because we'll be using it so what happens in that case it is performing two it is solving actually two problems in the same one is it is helping you as a counter and also it is giving you a variable that you can use okay uh, it will be more clear when we uh, see the alphabets printing okay so when i is equals to 0 it is going inside the j loop and j loop is changing from 0 to 4 that is 4 times sorry 5 uh, yeah 0 1 2 3 4 5 times and every time we are printing a star and giving a space here and then when the for loop is over after printing four uh, sorry five stars it is changing the line okay now it is changing the line and again it goes back to the first for loop and now the value of i changes you see here the when j is equals to zero it is printing five stars then again line is changing then again it is going to five uh, for i is equals to one now it is changing to 1 and then again j is changing from 0 to 5 sorry 4 then again this this and this so this is how we get a pattern in the square format now if i want to print a left star pattern left star is basically something like this left star okay. so this is what like upright position and it could be in a downward position like inverted one so let's understand so for i in the range 0 to 5 we know that number of rows okay for such programs what we have to do is we have to count how many rows are there so you see here 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 rows are here and how many columns are here 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 six rows and six columns so what i'm going to do is six rows and six columns so for i is equals to zero and it goes up to six it will not include six but it is going up to six okay now for j that is the columns how it is changing okay when i is equals to one i means the when row is equals to one we have one column when row is equals to two we have two columns when row is equals to three we have three columns when row is equals to four we have four columns 
five five columns similarly when row is equal to six we have six columns so that means our row should start from zero and it should go up to whatever the maximum value of i is that is if i is equals to four the number of rows is four then the number of columns should be four let's replace i with rows and j with columns so so it's much more easier in that way when row is changing from 0 to 5 column is changing from 0 to i so what is happening here is max to max value that i can get is here like this when row is equals to 1 column is equals to 1 row is equals to 2 column changes from 1 and 2 now you see in this case column goes from 0 or say 1 from 1 to rows 1 to row okay from 1 to row this is same everywhere similarly here since I've started from 0 again I'm starting from 0 here but it is ending at i that is row here now if I print I'm printing the star and then changing it so when row is equals to 0 I go to the other loop that is column here column is equals to 0 0 to 0 that is one time okay. it prints one time then again row becomes 1 now again column becomes 0 to 1 so that is why we are getting two times you see we also have a space here that is when 0 0 okay it is not printing one time here because r is not included r minus 1 is included if you are thinking that when 0 to 0 it should not print anything so it is basically this one okay so we have printed it here six times so this is upright triangle left side triangle okay now let's reverse this like let's turn it upside down what is happening here is Suppose I am printing from 0 to 5, let's make it 6 and this is also 6. So what is happening here is, if I want to reverse it, I want 5 star in the first line. Okay. So either you start the value from, okay, let's start from 0 and it is going to 6 up to 5. So i becomes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And j, what we are going to do is, j is starting from 6, it is going up to i. What is happening here is, we are starting in a reverse direction. When i is equals to this, column is equals to this. When i is equals to this, column is equals to this. So we are doing the reverse one. So what is the relation we can find from here is we have to subtract the value of column one by one. Okay. Before doing that, uh, let's see one thing. When I have range function and I have to print one to five. So this is going to print one to five. Oh, just a second print yeah so this is going to print 1 to 5 it's not printing So 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, if we give a step size here, that is 2. So what it is going to do is, it will take 1, then add 2 to it, then again add 2 to it, up to 5. So let's make it, suppose, 19. So what it is going to do is, it is going to make 1, 
3, 5, 7, 9, 11. So you see this is adding elements here. Let's write in the reverse direction here. 19, 1 and if I write here minus 2. You see 19, 17, 15, 13. So it is subtracting here. So similarly here the number of rows is 6. So we are starting from 0 to 6 and then j value is starting from 6 and it is going to up to i that is okay. when row is equals to 1 column is equals to 3 when row is equals to 2 column is equals to 2 when row is equals to 3 column is equals to 1 so what is happening here in any case you see in any case the sum of these two values row and column so we have here three rows and three columns three rows and three columns sum of row and column r plus c is basically the value of row plus column is basically four every place it is four you have to always find a relationship between row and column numbers okay so what is happening here is as the value of i or row changes the max value of column can be their summation minus one or summation minus row suppose this four is their sum so if row is equals to x column will be sum minus x okay. this is the formula now here I am starting in a reverse direction 6 going up to i and printing by subtracting 1 so what is happening here let's understand from the output of the program so j is when i is equals to 0 that is row is 1 the value of j is starting from 6 okay we are printing 6 times 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 how it is printing 6 times first j value is 6 then the last limit is 0 okay then it from 6 it becomes minus 1 that is 5 then 4 then 3 and then 2 and then 1 so this is the first line when i is equals to 0 when i becomes 1 now it has to go from 6 5 4 3 2 because it's always less than i okay again when i is equals to 3 when i is equals to 3 6 becomes from 6 5 and 4 this when i is equals to 4 6 and 5 when i is equals to 5 then only one time so this is how we print in a reverse direction what will happen if we merge both these programs so one is printing us upside one upside down and other is printing means uh, the normal star So left star pattern this is upward direction and this is the bottom side one okay now if I run this what it is going to do is it is going to print something like this you see so this pro this particular program when you see any program like this you should not think it as a single program so this type of programs are basically two different programs merged into one single programs here so let me show you another example here so you see this this example right this and the last one these two things are different programs when you see this one that is the fourth pattern so either you can consider up to here top three rows as one program and bottom four rows as another program similarly in the second uh, the last one 
you can consider up to top three rows as one program or top four rows as one program and then bottom three line as another program or you can also consider it as three programs like top three lines into one code then single star into another code and the bottom three lines of star into one another code so you have to find like understand where to split your programs into multiple programs because if you write in a single line everything uh, will be a complex uh, program so it will uh, not be easy to debug and also it will not be easy for solving so this is our program where we have made a diagonal now just think how to make it a program like this using this okay you have already made this how to make it like that okay so it's very simple you just decide it how to do okay. now let's say this example So in this basically for i in range 0 to 5 and j is going from 4 to i and then minus 1 and we are printing a space separated by space and then we are printing a star. Let's see what will be the output of this thing. Okay the connection has been lost just a second. Okay, no worries let it connect uh, before that uh, let's cover this one so if I want to print left star pattern in an upside down direction okay okay so this is for I in range 0 to 5 again J for for uh, J loop is there and now we are printing a space okay let's comment this Okay, let's not discuss this. Uh, this is a diagonal printing. So similarly, you can print the right diagonal and left diagonal. Okay. So if I want to print a star in an upside down condition, so how we can do that? So let me show you what will be the output this way. So here, what you have to understand is you have to break the program into two things. First is a right side triangle that is having star marks and left side triangle that is having space okay so our program will be divided into two different part with a space and without space so first we'll be printing space so you see first space here second space line this one and third space line is this one okay and how many rows are there four rows and four columns okay for that we are using uh, zero to five we know that if we comment this part okay if we comment this part what answer we are going to get is we are going to get this old pattern what we did right now what we have to do is we have to add spaces into this in the first star we have to add four space in second we have to add three space then two space and then one space so first we have to add four space that is why we are starting another loop from 4 okay, 4 and up to i i that is 0 so it is going to print us 4 stars 4 3 2 1 4 3 2 1 before i okay 1 uh, less than i i is 0 so 0 will not be included so 4 stars are required so 0 will be excluded so we have 1 2 3 4 and minus one is basically decreasing order okay so first this is printed like four four spaces are printed then it is going to other loop in that what it is going to do is it is printing the star how many times equal to or less than i 
then again when this loop is completed it is changing the line again it is going back to i i becomes one now now we have to print three times start because four comma one so one will not be included so four three and two so three spaces will be printed from by this line then again will print two stars because i is equals to one so we have got here and you see once one space is also here it is because i is so for the first loop we are getting when i is equals to zero we are getting this blank line okay when i is equals to one we are getting this when i is equals to two we are getting this when i is equals to three we are getting this when i is equals to four that is here you see when i is equals to four that is no space so this is the line we are getting similarly let's understand another concept of printing string with a number multiplied by, now if i print this star into four so what it is going to do is it is going to multiply four into the star right no it is not going to happen that way it is basically going to repeat star marks four times so we have four star here now writing the above pattern program into one single line you see this one what is happening here is i am writing a for loop that is changing from 0 to 5 then i am printing space how many times space is there in the first time it is basically 5 minus i so when i is equals to 0 then we have to print four spaces and then i am adding that space with a star mark how many how many times of star marks so when i is equals to 0 it is printing zero star mark. when i is equals to one it is printing one star okay if you want to remove this first line that is blank one you start it from one so what is happening here is it is taking this space printing it this many times then adding to that line this many times of stars okay so for one i is equals to one it is printing five minus one is that is four times space so one two three and four times space it is printing then adding star marks how many times whatever times the value of i that is first i is equals to 1 that is 1 when i becomes 2 it is making 2 star marks and here how many spaces 5 minus 2 that is 3 star 3 spaces 1 2 and 3 see so if you want to make it in a single line you can write like this now if i want to make upper diamond program i have to write like this because we have a space here so one code will be for space other code will be for star marks and that is rows and columns so this is for rows this is for columns and this is for space okay now you see here the difference between this and this here is only one thing here we have printed i and here we are printing i plus 1 that is every time ok let me change it to i then it will be easier to understand now you see it is printing this way diamond form ok now if i make it i plus 1 oh, what's happening here Oh, sorry yeah this space is being added here not that i plus one this is space if i remove this space so we are getting something like this but if i add a space here it is adding and shifting the stars to the right side okay 
now if i want to make a reverse pattern you just think how to do it. so just a hint you have to change this and rest and this one and resting remains same and you can get a reverse and once you merge those two programs you will get a diamond program so there is another question can we do this in one single line like we did here so yes we can do this how it is happening so we are printing space these many times and then star with a space we are printing i times so this is going to give us this pattern so you have to just understand the logic how many stars are there in a row or how many stars are there in a column now if i want to print number or alphabet i'll just replace the numbers i or j with some numbers so if I want to print up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 like that. So number of rows changes from 0 to 5. And then J changes from 1 to 6. And I'm printing the J itself. Okay. So since I wanted my numbers to be printed from 1. That is why I have started it from 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and, all, and so on. But if I make it from 0. It is going to give us the values from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 like that so this is triangle in the form of numbers now if i want to make left star pattern upside down with the numbers i'll copy the old code and instead of star i'll print the number itself that is j so for alphabets let's understand what is ascii code so ascii code is basically an american standard code of information interchange so what does that do is basically it assigns a numerical number to any character. So for alphabets, we have uh, numbers that is uh, for capital A, it is designated a number that is 65. Capital B is 66 and similarly uh, it goes uh, up to Z and then again with some there is a some gap and then uh, for small letters also. So we have number is equals to 65. Now if we print num, we get 65. But if I add CHR, that this, this thing is called as type casting or type conversion. Converting integer back into character type. So it is converting this numerical value into character type. So whatsoever the ASCII value of this num is having, it is getting changed. So as I told, this 65 is basically represented by A. Now if I want to print alphabets, what I'm going to do is, I'll take a variable called as num. For i, we have 0 to 5. For j, we have 0 to i. So it is basically going to give one element, then in second row, two elements, and then third row, three elements, and so on. So instead of printing star, we are printing the character format of this number. Okay. Now let's print this and you see we are getting A, 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 A. But if we want instead of A, A, B, C, D, something like that, what we have to do is we have to keep this thing increasing. So after each print, we are increasing the value with 1. Now if I run it, you see we are getting A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. But if I want every time it starts with the A only. So once the for loop is completed and the line is changed, change the number back to 65. So what is happening here is once again when I is becomes 1, then again the I value and number value is 65. So you see A, B, A, B, C. A, B, C, D. Okay. Now, instead of using this num, we can also use that number here itself in the for loop. From 65 to 70, starting, J is starting from 65 and it is going up to I. And then we are printing the character format of J. And now you see we are getting the same A, B, A, B, C and A, B, C, D. So you can try there are different other formats and there are different other programs also you can try playing with those things the main idea is to understand how the row and columns are related how you can arrange 
or play with those row and column combinations and then again dividing your one pattern into multiple pattern wherever necessary is the key idea of making any pattern program and uh, for understanding the concept of the python you can check the python playlist and that's all for today thank you